today we're going to be building a 62 kilohertz switching supply. While you can buy integrated circuits, solid one chip designs that are made to drive MOSFETs, they're designed for a power supply purpose. I prefer not to use those because if I use these integrated circuits here, I can use them for another purpose later. So I just keep a few of these different circuits on hand and I can make anything with them. So that's why I prefer to use those. Today we're going to be making a switching power supply using these three integrated circuits. A 555 timer on the left, the 4013 flip-flop in the center, and the AND gate which is the 4081. So this is the overall complete schematic of it right here. What we're going to be building is this, this, and this, plus the 555 timer which is not shown in the circuit. That signal coming in is right here where it needs uh, 124 kilohertz approximately. These circuits right here are for protection. Overcurrent, if drawn through this resistor, will activate this transistor. Turning off this transistor, allowing this to rise up to positive voltage. Clocking this flip-flop and then turning off the gate signal here and disabling the FET drive. That's how this current protection works. And the lights here are connected to the Q1 and the Q bar, which I call Q2. When it's disabled, the red light is on. Normal operation, this line would be high. This is the clock generator, but we're running at 125 kilohertz, or 124 not 62. The hookup is the same except this is 47k and this is 3.3k. This is 100 picofarad. I'm using five lithium phosphate batteries, 3.2 volts each. That's the total voltage coming in here at the plug. Right over here. But then I'm putting that into a 78L um, 12 regulator, a little 3 pin fixed regulator. So this is powered up by 12 volts and I have the battery running at about 16 and a half. So this is the waveform coming out of pin 3 of the 555 timer. We're running at about 125 kilohertz and the dead time is 550 nanoseconds. The dead time is when it switches low right here. That's 550 nanoseconds. We're running at 125 kilohertz right here. So we installed our 4013 flip-flop. These are all the CMOS variety components to let you know. And basically we're going to tie the reset and the set lines to ground right here. And then we're going to take the data line. That's pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and tie it to pin 2. Pin 1 and 2 is our Q outputs, our phase 1 and phase 2. So then we're simply just going to have to connect to pin 3 the signal and bring it into pin 3 here, the clock. So now we got the 4013 flip-flop hooked up. Now we have two outputs that are opposite in phase just to let you keep you reminded that we're running on a 12 volt bus for the digital circuits off the 16 and a half volt battery. If we come over here and look at the scope we're now at 62 kilohertz. It's kind of hard to see that value but it's right up in here. 62 kilohertz right there. We got two opposite waveforms, so now we can drive uh, the MOSFETs with this. But the problem is there's no dead time. So if you hook this up to really small FETs, the minute you turn on the power, it'll blow them right up. Because they're switching at exactly the same time here. We can't, we can't have that, so we got to fix that. And that's the next little task that we're going to do. So what we're going to hook up now is the dead time circuit. The dead time circuit is composed of this 1K resistor, this 18 picofarad capacitor, 
and this 4081 AND gate. We will use the other half of the 4081 to create the enable gate where we can turn the FET drive off and on by switching this line from high to low. So I hooked up the 4081 AND gate as shown in the schematic and now that creates the dead time plus the enabler where I have an enable line where I can turn the FET drive on and off. Looking at the drive now coming out of the 4081 AND gate, you can see there's definitely some dead time now in the switching. So if we were to run this, let's see, over to here, there's your dead time. It's about 500 nanoseconds. You can definitely see the dead time now. This is a perfect waveform to switch the power fets with. To continue on with this, if you wanted to drive some little teeny fets like IRF 110s, you could put the signal directly into the gate. It would be fine. But if you want to make a high power power supply, we have to now put optocouples onto this circuit. So we're going to continue on and connect those in. So what I'm going to use is an A3120, two of them, one for each phase. These are a uh, optocouple and they're made to drive IGBT or MOSFET type devices. They have a two and a half amp output so you could put a whole string of MOSFETs on it and make a really powerful uh, supply or you could just put two MOSFETs and, and be done with it. But with this right here, you'll get the fast switching speed and it'll be clean operation. These things operate at a minimum of 15 volts. So that's why I got a 16 and a half volt battery. Now you see why I got the 12 volt regulator. That's to prevent the CMOS circuits from blowing up at 16 volts. And what we do is we drive this optocouple so we can level transition to 16 and a half volt drive to the MOSFETs or IGBTs, whichever you prefer to use. The spec sheet for the optocouples asks that you basically shunt the LED diode with a 4.7K ohm resistor, so that's what we got here on each one. And then we're just feeding into them with a 2.2K resistor each over here, coming from the output of the 4081 AND gate those go into the anodes on each of those optocouples. The optocouples are running on the 16 volt rail up here at the top. Remember, if it's not running at that rail, they won't operate because they have automatic voltage shut off. They'll turn off when the batteries get below a certain level. On the scope output, this is the output from the optocouples. We got a nice 15 volt drive, plus and minus and then we're at 62.69 kilohertz, perfect for the transformer that we're going to design for this circuit. And our dead time, if we look at it, it's about 700 nanoseconds. That's perfect. Part two of this video will be the design, the calculation, the design of this PQ power transformer right here capable of handling up to about 2,000 watts. Spec sheet for the optocouples, sometimes they, they call them HCPL A3120 to be able to find it, but these are the, the pinouts on them. You have to have a 0.1 capacitor connected from pin 5 and 8 on VCC and VEE. Spec sheet on the 4013 flip-flop. You have your pin 1, pin 2, that's Q1, Q2, or Q bar. Pin 3 is clock, reset is 4, data is 5, pin 6 is set, and pin 7 is ground. Spec sheet for the 4081 AND gate. And there's your pinouts so that you can connect that up. This is the pinout for the 555 timer. 